Thus far on test drive, we've driven two model years of the Kia Sorento EX V6 for 2018 and 2019. This year, Kia has taken our advice. You're welcome and cut back on their trims from eight down to six. Our snapshot is on this 2020 Kia Sorento SX V6. We're going over what's changed for this year and what you need to know if you're in the market for the final model year of the third generation Kia Sorento. So I've actually driven every model year of the Sorento since 2016, but we started doing test drive for the 2018 model. We're looking at the SX V6. It's fully loaded for 2020 here in Canada. MSRP for this vehicle is $46,545 with the $250 Imperial Blue paint job. For 2019, the SX V6 cost $1,200 less, but you didn't have the 360 degree camera that's on this one and lane keep assist. The SXL for 2019 was the top end trim that actually cost $49,165. You got those features along with Napa leather. But Kia has removed that trim and put the Telluride in that position. So essentially, the SX V6 is as fully loaded as it gets when it comes to the Sorento. And then if you want more, you got to go up to the Telluride. And that honestly makes sense. It's just good business. Now this uses the same 3.3 liter V6 with 290 horsepower, 252 pound-feet of torque that we've tested before. It has the eight-speed Sportmatic automatic transmission with all-wheel drive. The SX, unlike the EX, comes with LED headlights, taillights, fog lights, and daytime running lights. They use the distinctive amber light color instead of regular white. I think it looks pretty cool. You have 360 degree camera with excellent quality, forward collision alert, rear cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, front and rear parking sensors, a smart power lift gate. If you enable it, you can stand it behind the car when it's locked and it will pop up automatically, along with automatic power folding mirrors. A couple other features that you get are a panoramic sunroof, premium leather seats, front heat and ventilation with driver memory, power front seats, a heated steering wheel, dual zone automatic climate control, an eight inch infotainment system with Sirius XM, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and a 10 speaker Harman Kardon audio system. You also have Qi wireless charging, side window sunshades for the second row, and an illuminated front door scuff plate with deluxe interior trim and keyless entries. So really there isn't anything new for 2020, it's really just changing things around, fitting it better into Kia's lineup. And like I said, there's just too many trims available for this vehicle, even though it is a high volume seller for Kia, with too much choice, people will just get confused. So I'm glad that they've cut it down a little bit, now down to six trims would be nice if they could squeeze it down a little bit more, make things a little simpler for buyers here in Canada. Now we have driven these before, but let's take it on a road test to go over how it performs, handles, and everything else you need to know about the 2020 Kia Sorento SX V6. We're sort of at the end of winter here. Uh, you know, I'm wearing a t-shirt more or less, and almost all the snow has melted, thankfully. So it's not really easy for me to be able to do winter testing anymore. We had like a really two month window that we had a good amount of snow that we could test it on. But I can tell you that the Sorento does handle the snow very well. Winter tires make the difference. I would personally go with either Toyo Observe tires on this or if you can afford things like Pirelli Scorpions, they really are the best. But if you're looking for a car that works well in all weather conditions, the Sorento has it going because there are drive modes. You have comfort, sport, smart, and eco mode. Plus you've got the all wheel drive lock button. So you have a little bit more control than some of the other vehicles in this segment. So it's a nice plus to have. Now you'll notice there, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but when I come to a stop, there's like a small delay. It's like the car is going into sleep mode. There's no auto stop start system on this vehicle, but it feels like there almost is is because the car has a little bit of a delay when you come off the line from a full stop. And that's probably my only major dislike about this vehicle. I know it's kind of nitpicking, but you can see it there again, there's like a half a second delay just coming off the line. But every model year that we've driven of the Sorento, I've liked it. It has so much to offer, especially for the price point, and it really does have class leading technology like the infotainment. It truly is the best infotainment system in the consumer segment. It does everything really well. You have a 10 speaker Harman Kardon audio system, and we love Harman Kardon. And the space is really good too. So yeah, they've taken away the Napa leather for 2020 because they want you to go up 
to the Kia Telly, right? And that makes sense. Any manufacturer is going to reposition things when a new vehicle comes out. So they've readjusted their trims, which is something that I've talked about pretty much every model year for almost every Kia that we've done. Less trims means that buyers have you know less choice in theory, but it makes things just a little bit more simpler, especially if you're looking at a vehicle like this, you don't need 35,000 different options for it. You pick the color, you pick the trim, it should be pretty simple. So six is good. I'm glad they've gone with that. There's nothing that they've changed for this that is really a negative. Like I said, they've adjusted the price and feature-wise based on the Telluride, you lose out on the Napa leather, not a huge deal. Space is still really good. Third row is usable. If you have to put an adult back there, they will not die, but they won't be super happy. You do have the controls back there to turn on the airflow, but there's no USB charging in there. We're starting to see that even in this segment that they are adding USB ports from other manufacturers so that if there is somebody back there, they can charge their tablet or phone while they're cramped in the back. But overall, the Sorento does everything really well. There's nothing from the 2019 that we've changed our opinion about. It still handles, performs, and drives really well. Interior sound is good, but not class leading. And you do have the features that you'd really want, especially for the price point. You have panoramic sunroof, all the safety tech you can imagine. And yeah, you don't have things like a HUD or massaging seats, but really, do you need those things, especially for $46,000 and change? I don't think so. I think people who are looking at this top end SX V6, which actually might surprise you, is pretty high. I do see a lot of them. It's easy to spot with that distinctive amber LED daytime running light. You get a lot of features with it. You don't have to pay a whole lot for it either. And I mean, we've been driving this one for 13,000 kilometers so far. Now we've had no issues. You just do the oil changes and you're pretty good. Kia has a really good warranty too, a five year warranty plus their roadside assistance for five years, unlimited kilometers. So you're pretty well protected. Everything we liked and disliked about the 2019 carries over except for the trims because there's less of them. So nice plus, nice improvement there Kia. Once again, showing us that you can make a great vehicle even if it's on the tail end of the production as we look towards 2021. That will be a very interesting Sorento.